today I will show you how to shoot a whole cinematic b-roll sequence of yourself by yourself. I will show you how I set up every shot, how I light the scene, which settings I use and I will also explain all the thoughts and intentions behind every shot throughout this video. As we all know, humans got attention spans like a stone these days. There are so many things that could distract the viewer and you as a filmmaker have to take care of this. The first thing I want you to master is the right intention of a shot. If you plan out your video and set the framing of a shot correctly, you can guide the viewer's eye to a specific point so that he knows where to look at within the first second. That's exactly what we want to achieve. For the first shot, I positioned the camera in a way that I can use the draws to the left and to the right as leading lines. This way I can shift the focus 100% on the subject. For the second shot, I positioned my camera directly towards the radio and I chose a high focal length to draw the attention completely on the button. Now I use the basic jump cut to connect these clips and to set the proper flow right from the start. It's always important to establish a scene with a wide shot so that the viewer has a rough knowledge about where you are, who you are and what you're doing. If you complement the establishing shot with close-up or detail shots, you are already telling a little story. After that, I used another jump cut where the camera is now positioned inside the dishwasher. This way, I capture the same action from a different and creative angle to deliver more engagement and make it more interesting to watch. Always try to cover the same scene from two or three different angles, following and matching the action that takes place. This way you will learn the craft of storytelling faster and your b-roll looks way more professional. Now I filmed a top-down shot where I start to clear out the dishwasher. This shot wasn't easy to get and you have to be very careful when you set up your camera, especially when you don't have enough room or a c-stand to make this work. The next shot again is a simple one, but this time the framing is crucial. Let me explain you why. Imagine that these shots were captured like this. Even if it's the same clip with the exact same action, your brain will tell you that something is wrong here, simply because we have to move our eyes from the left side of the frame to the right side of the frame. You achieve a much better flow and deliver a better feeling to the viewer if you match the shots in a way that he only has to look on a specific point where the next action will take place. Like I said before, a viewer will get distracted easily and if he has to look left, right, up or down after every clip, chances are high that he will lose interest. The normal viewer won't really recognize this, but in the end it still makes a big difference for him psychology I guess. The next shot is a side shot where I took a screen record of my phone screen and mirror it with a hologram effect. Now I started my vacuum cleaner robot on my phone. I filmed him driving out of his loading station. To get on an eye level with him I chose a low angle shot because it also matches the following shot where I position the camera onto the robot when he is entering the kitchen. Now it was time to clean up the floor, so I captured a wide shot to show what is happening next. To round up the scene, I chose another POV shot where I prepared a cleaning mop. Think about every shot twice. You can connect and craft shots together way more powerful by positioning your camera with a proper composition. 
By the way, did you notice how I still always maintain the focus on the subject and guide the viewer's eye to a specific point in all the shots? You never got distracted, you barely had to move your eyes and you're still watching the video. So hey, that's the proof that it works. Another important thing you should always do is to reflect and review your videos. Always ask yourself if there is a better way to improve your story. Maybe you could have captured another angle. Maybe it wasn't the right lighting condition. Be critical with yourself, practice and repeat. This is the only way you get better as a filmmaker. Now that I'm done cleaning my kitchen, it was time to leave the room and sit down on my couch to watch some Netflix before I started editing this video. Like in my other videos, you know that I like to use my bite mount of my GoPro to get these kind of shots. And yeah, let's blind out that I sometimes nearly puked myself. If you want to become a better filmmaker, you should subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to like this video and I hope I see you next time. Bye.